What's your opinion on her as a person? Um, it changed from the beginning because we were filming out in Syria. So I spent a lot of time in Raqqa. When I first met her, I felt sorry for her. Mm -hmm. And she was very apologetic. She said sorry loads of times for what she'd done. But during my time over the next two, two and a half years, she changed. Um, it seemed that she'd been, we use the word groomed, but somebody was schooling her inside. So she changed from being this um, person that was apologetic for what she'd done. She'd understand that she'd done something really bad to somebody that became a victim all of over a period. So, and then she'd become from this victim to this angry victim. Um, I, I witnessed her having tantrums and loads of other bits and pieces. And I, as I say, I changed my mind by several things she said and done. Um, I, so I didn't go there with any political opinion because we were filming. So it's mm. part of a documentary. So um, my opinion was formed by actually getting to know her and getting deep inside her head. So all this stuff that, that we hear about, is, it, is she putting on an act? Is she putting on a front? Yeah, of course, yeah. She is, um, like I said, from victims. And I, and I think people have to understand um, people don't think of the victims. We say radicalised, we say she was groomed. I don't think she was groomed. I don't think she was radicalised. I think she wanted to go. People mistake that she was 15. She was an intelligent girl. They said she was radicalised or groomed online. I don't think so, neither, because there's so much... We, I mean, we live in a world where I, we can see what ISIS has done. She got what she wanted. She wanted to go and get married out there, and she said she was in a happy marriage as well out there, and that changed during my meetings with her. Do All right. What do you mean by that? Well, when I first met her, she said, I asked her, was she in love with her husband? And she said she loved him very much. And she showed me pictures that she had of a happy marriage. Then I watched a documentary um, last year, which I didn't really enjoy very much, but because I saw the lies in that. And it, she said she was then a victim of her husband, uh, mental abuse. But that wasn't the first thing she told me. Mm. So she changes her stories mm -hmm. as she goes along. Mm. What I find quite remarkable, just, just reading about your, your time with her, um, is, is she told you that the death of her three children no longer makes her sad and that she'd managed to move on? Isn't that shocking? Mm. I, don't think, I think that, to me, describes everything about her. She's able to shut everything out. She's able to change. Um, she got angry with me last time I was there because I didn't bring a book for her, which was Guantanamo Bay Diaries, because she wanted to build this victim personality from that book, she was using kind of a manual. So, yeah, no, the, the, she is, she, she's really a mixed up girl. And like to say to you, people say, is she dangerous? Let me explain to you how dangerous she could be. I'm still in contact with the prison, with another prisoner in there. And they are now, ISIS, uh, in for, they've all got mobile phones in the prison. The girls have got them. And at the moment, um, they're having marriages to high ranking ISIS um, I don't know, generals or whatever you want to call them. So we're not even sure that um, Shamima is still not in contact with ISIS. No one knows that because these phones have been sneaked in. She was texting me for probably close to a year and a half right. um, on a moving story. So, yeah, she could be dangerous. She, be, she could be talking to ISIS as we speak now. She has that capability because other women in that camp are. So that, that might answer your danger question. I mean, be sure. I mean, it, this is the problem. It's whether... As you say, does she pose a threat to the UK or is she just someone who, in effect, wants to be, in some sort of weird way, a celebrity? She does want to be a celebrity. You can see the pictures she poses for. Some are sickening. Because um, you've got to remember, she is ISIS. She, is what, she was a member of somebody that, you know, a group that um, bombed Manchester um, Arena. Yeah. She was part of that. We seem to sort of just have this, we describe her as this kind of radicalised, poor, groomed girl. She's not. I know her. I've been with her. People can't argue that. Mm. Do you think she is creating a westernised character based on what you say? Because it's even striking looking at the pictures of her there, how much her appearance has changed. Of she's course. no longer wearing the hijab. She, in the photos with you, she's in a, a snapback cap and yeah, she's pouting. Yeah, yeah of course. She pounced all the photographs and there was this, I think it was, I'm not too sure in the Telegraph or something, there was this almost like a Vogue type style picture, which is sickening. I think we've done that. And I know um, the comments after this is, why do we bring her to the forefront? Well, she brings herself to the forefront. Mm -hmm. She's the person that's appealing again. And I think pe people are confused about the appeal as well. That means she might get her citizenship back. I tell you, she won't come back, because I think she'll um, face the courts in Syria and she could do a 20-year sentence anyway. All right. OK. Andrew Drury, really good to see you. I mean, it's mm -hmm. fascinating to get that sort of insight with someone who's spent time with her and quite a lot of time with her. Thanks very much indeed.